think if you asked most people if they want to feel more peace, they would say yes. So what's stopping them? Or should I say, what's stopping us? Well, as we get into that, it's important to know that stress is the result of all of the accumulated pressure of our repressed and suppressed feelings. External events only trigger what we've been holding down. The main stress load is what we carry around with us all of the time. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing some of the most useful information I found from this book, Letting Go, The Pathway of Surrender. So what have we been doing instead of letting go and really feeling peace? There are three things we naturally do when we are resisting and avoiding our feelings. The first is simply repression and suppression. Now, repression is something that we do unconsciously and suppression is something we do consciously. We do this because we don't want to be bothered with our feelings and we don't know what to do with them anyway. Now, all three of these resistance and avoidance tactics that I'm about to share all involve suppression and repression. But here's what it looks like on its own. It looks like us suffering through our negative emotions and trying to keep functioning the best that we can. And when we do this, our negative feeling inside often shows itself as denial and projection. The second way we resist and avoid our feelings is through expression. This is when our feelings are vented, verbalized, stated in body language, or acted out. We think when we do this that we're letting go because often after we've expressed our feelings, a lot of the times we do feel a little bit better. But what actually happens when we do this But what actually happens when we do this is the expression of our negative feelings allows just enough of the inner pressure inside of us to be let out so then that the remainder can be suppressed. Learning about this was fascinating to me. I have found myself many times venting about something and then afterward, explicitly saying, wow, I feel so much better now that I've said this out loud or talked about it. But what we need to realize is that talking about our feelings is not actually feeling our feelings. Okay, and the third way we resist and avoid our feelings is through escape. And this can look like all of the unhealthy things we do in our free time, or it can also look like constant activity or an endless variety of pursuits. And another sign this is happening is having a loss of real interest in others. And what about the people who do try to address their stress in a healthy way. Well, this book brings to light a beautiful point. In the introduction, right away on page two, the author begins to list all of the things that we try to do to relieve our stress. And the list goes on so long that it started to sound poetic to me. It goes on for two and a half pages. And that is a lot of things that we attempt to do to relieve our stress. And yet somehow there are still all of these industries dedicated to attempting to do just that. And if they worked, 
I guess they would all be going out of business, but do they ultimately work? It might help in the short term, but these are not helping in the long term or getting at the root cause of the stress. So what we're doing with what you are about to learn is that you don't need to go searching the world over to feel peace. As the author puts it, this is not something new or outside of yourself. It's already yours. We are going to undo the basis of the problem and that is through surrendering. I am going to show you exactly how to do that. Let's get into it. So instead of those three avoidance and resistance tactics that we usually naturally do, instead, we are going to feel our feelings. So imagine this, a negative feeling arises within you. You dislike something you just saw, heard, thought of, or remembered. You can feel it in your body. Your mind starts filling with negative thoughts and you are resisting what you dislike and you are also resisting the feeling in your body. You are feeling fear and you are also feeling guilt because there is no just negative feeling. All negative feelings are accompanied by guilt. If you're feeling negative, that doesn't feel good, and then you feel bad about that. Here, let me put the levels of consciousness on the screen so that you have a visual. Everything below courage is a negative feeling. Now, we're not done with the letting go technique, but I just want you to see that by you doing this process, you are bringing yourself up to the level of courage because you are facing what you haven't been wanting to face. The level of courage is the transition from negative to positive. Okay, so you have this negative feeling that has risen up inside of you. Here is the process we're going to start doing. You are going to allow the feeling to be there. You're going to let yourself have this feeling. You're not going to resist it. You're not going to try to change it. You're not going to vent about it. You're not going to judge it. And you're not gonna moralize about it. We're allowing ourselves to feel and experience what has risen inside of us and we're staying with it. We're not entertaining any thoughts. We're not putting any focus on our thoughts. We're putting all of our focus and attention on the feeling and allowing it to be there. We are surrendering to the experience. Peace comes from total surrender to what is. When we typically resist a feeling that comes up in us, that is the exact thing that fuels it. If you surrender to and acknowledge the feeling and allow it to be there, it will run its course and it will dissipate. Let it be what it is until it runs out. Keep in mind that feeling your feelings is not indulging in all of the thoughts around the feeling. It's just focusing on the feeling in your body and surrendering. Now here are five obstacles you might run into when you're practicing the letting go technique. The first two are really just two ends of a spectrum. On one end, we have the one and done attitude. This is when we try the letting go technique and we feel we've done it pretty thoroughly. And then a little bit later, the feeling continues or returns and you feel like it 
didn't work, so you quit. But that's not how this works. If the feeling comes up again, that just means that there's more of it to surrender, and that's okay. Our feelings are survival programs that the mind believes are necessary. And the letting go technique undoes these programs progressively. That's the key word, progressively. This is an ongoing process, but if you do it, things will get better and the process will become easier and quicker. On the other end of the spectrum, we have someone who has been practicing this for a while and they're feeling good and then a negative feeling comes up and they get frustrated and they quit. They also forget to view this as a way of life. The author makes a funny but sincere point about this and that is even though we may have angelic ambitions, we are not angelic yet. Now I'm not trying to push any certain religion on anyone. I think a lot of people believe that once we pass away, we will be relieved of all of the negative things we experience on earth, or at least they believe that we become nothing, in which case, I guess that would be the same scenario. We're still human and that's okay. We're going to have these feelings and it's that's why it's called a practice. We're just working on it as they come up. And like I said, it'll become easier and you'll be able to let go of the negative feelings that you don't want to hold on to quicker than you have before. Another obstacle happens when we explicitly feel guilt over our negative feelings. When you are feeling this, here is some perspective. Feelings come and go, and eventually you'll realize that you are not your feelings. The real you is merely witnessing them. You will stop identifying with all of those feelings. The you that is observing and aware of what is happening, that you always stays the same. And as you become more and more aware of the changelessness within you, you will start identifying with that level of consciousness. You will become progressively, primarily the witness rather than the experiencer of phenomena. You'll get closer and closer to your real self. You thought that you were the victim of your feelings. Now you will see that your feelings are created by the ego, that collector of programs that the mind has mistakenly believed are necessary for survival. This is the human condition. And to be able to observe our feelings honestly requires a non-judgmental attitude. Another obstacle you might run into is resistance to letting go at all. If we get stuck in a feeling, it's because we secretly believe it will accomplish something for us. If you find yourself making this choice, deciding that you're not ready to let go of something, it's insightful to look at the payoff we get from hanging on to the residuals of a painful experience. What satisfaction are you getting out of holding on to it? All of these negative emotions have what the author calls a cheap little payoff. That little inner satisfaction we get when we hang on to pain. Something else you can do that is similar to looking for the little satisfaction or cheap payoff that you get is 
looking at what your intent is. What is the supposed purposeful intent you have with hanging on to this emotion? If you fantasize that this will have some effect on another person, what do you think their likely response would be? And if you create that energy and circumstance, is that what you really want? If this were the last day of your life, is that what you would want? And even then, a lot of times our negative feelings don't change the other person or change their opinion. If anything, it makes it worse. Keep this in mind. What we win with negative emotions is short-lived. It doesn't really ever satisfy. And ultimately, if you are feeling resistance to doing the letting go technique, to feeling your feelings, just remember, nobody's making you do this. You can hang on to your emotional upsets as long as you want to, which leads us to our last obstacle that can happen when we are trying the letting go technique. So what can happen is when you do this technique, you might become so beset with unpleasant emotions that you decide you don't want to experience this and you quit. And that's fear. That's the fifth obstacle. You are fearing the experience of this feeling or emotion. That's why we haven't been experiencing them all along, right? Well, here are some convincing reasons why you should go ahead and experience your feelings. The first is your health. The more emotional pressure you keep down inside of you, the more vulnerable you will be to the stress response and stress-related diseases, your behavior. When you progressively let go of lingering negative feelings and thoughts, you will have less and less of a need for escapism and all of those harmful and ineffective things that you do to yourself. Another reason why you should experience your feelings, your decision-making process. Your decisions result in what you see in your life. The levels of consciousness can be simplified into three major states that relate to decision making. When you are in the inert states, you have thoughts like, I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't think I can. And that doesn't make for very good outcomes in life, does it? When you're in the energetic state, you may accomplish some things, but there is an unevenness in your performance because you have a mixture of positive and negative thoughts. And while this state, the energetic state, is an improvement compared to the inert state, your decisions are motivated by self-interest, self-gain, and proving yourself. In contrast to that, in the peaceful state, you are motivated to create win-win situations. You take into account the welfare of other people, which leads us to our next benefit of the letting go technique, your relationship and connection with others. When you improve your emotional level, it is self-evident that your interactions and relationships with other people improve. You will have energy for the things you want to do. It takes energy to hold down our feelings. 
And when we relinquish those feelings, all of the energy that we were using to hold those feelings down and resist them can now be used for whatever you want. Facing a feeling and allowing it to be there and handling it at an emotional level instead of an intellectual level will shorten its duration dramatically. Handling it from the intellectual level produces thousands of thoughts and hypothetical scenarios. I think we've all experienced this. We stuff the feeling down and then we proceed to think about the topic exceedingly longer than necessary and certainly longer than just experiencing the feeling would have resulted in in the first place. Feeling your feelings is a quicker route to peace. So these are the things that you should remind yourself of when you think about doing this process. And just remember, if you find yourself telling yourself that you don't want to feel your feelings or you don't have time to deal with them now, or you don't have the bandwidth to. Just remember that that is costing you these life-changing benefits. Now, as much information as I've shared from this book, there are still entire sections I didn't cover. In fact, out of 21 chapters, I did not cover chapters four through 13 which each are dedicated to one of the levels of consciousness and give specific information about those. So if you'd love to have a copy of this book and delve even deeper into this and use it as a resource and reminder on how to feel more peace, there's a link below in the description. This is the thought the author wanted to leave the reader with. And I think it's the perfect way to look at this as we try to find the mindset and inspiration to do these things now and not wait. The author says, instead of viewing this as something in the future, own it now. Enlightenment is not something that occurs in the future after 50 years of sitting cross-legged and saying, um, it's right here in this instant. Experience arises like a note of music. The minute you hear a note, it's already passing away. The instant you've heard it, it's already dissolving. So every single moment is dissolving as it arises. Let go of anticipating the next moment, trying to control it, trying to hang on to the moment that has just passed. Let go clinging to what has just occurred. Let go trying to control what you think is about to occur. Then you live in an infinite space of non-time and non-event. There is an infinite peace beyond description and you are home. Thank you so much for watching and let me know in the comments if there was anything in particular that you found insightful or helpful. You can do this. I can feel you letting go.